So to anyone wondering about my fashion choice, this is my bathrobe and I am recording just basically after rolling out of bed this morning. Because I was mostly interested in just authenticity, what I wanted to uh, share with you, short and sweet, I, I don't see a lot of people, um, so I saw <clears throat> that the, what is it, Air Force Academy, I've been seeing suicides in the news because of social isolation, and we seem to not realize that social isolation has consequences. It's like that somehow mental health is completely trivial by comparison, and if you are a good citizen, you will stay away from people, except that people need people. Uh, so, so, yeah, so apparently the Air Force Academy decided to relax social distancing rules after two cadets committed suicide. And then I saw another stu a story in the news yesterday that, about a suicide also. And I, um, and I'm, and there's another group of people that we're not thinking about with all of this, you know, so you're good citizens right now are social distancing, okay. Um, I grew up in hell and uh, a virtual hell. I, I mean, I, I used to fantasize about having one of those little cars, you know, the, like the, the, I got one for, I got one for my daughter because I always wanted one. But I used to fantasize about having one of those little Mustangs or Camaros or whatever, the miniature ones that, you know, that actually had a motor and I pictured that I would run away and I would live at a museum out of, you know, like how they have rooms at museums. I was, I was gonna live at a museum. Uh, I read a book where the, where kids did this, and so I thought that was a good plan. But they live out of the money that people threw in the fountain. So that was what I was going to do, in my, at least in my head. And but my I, my home life was uh, my my dad. Every time my mom would come home from the grocery store, my dad would go on a tirade, and he would when he would come home from work, my mom would say to me, she would say, your father's home, you know, kind of like that in a panic. And I knew that what I was supposed to do was run and hide because I had no idea what kind of mood he might be in. And, and I won't go into all the details of, of the abuse, but you know, um, I mean, when I was 10, uh, I had, a, we got a beagle when I was five. I didn't have much to do with that. And she was weird too, because she was abused. So she would, she would actually tyrannize me also. She would, if she ever escaped we would keep her in the locked in the basement all the time and if she ever escaped out of the basement she would uh, she would bare her teeth at me and keep me in one place basically threaten me to stay in one place so uh, so I tried to avoid her but when I was 10 my my dad uh, he he told uh, my mom that it was either her or the dog um, presumably that he was going to kill and so he um, so they they put the dog down and he came home and he was upset. I don't remember being upset about it myself because this dog abused me also in addition to my home. But um, but here's the thing. Uh, if you have a perspective like mine from a childhood like mine, you know, people keep focusing on all of the family time that people are spending right now with their loved ones. You know, they, they, it's like people with families, like nice families that they actually like, they seem to have this Norman Rockwell view of what's going on right now as though it's, it's you know, like the best of times, the worst of times, or, you know, the best of times out of the worst of times except that there are a lot of people who don't have a voice there are a lot of people who don't have a voice who can't tell you what this is doing to them for one thing people who are you know like if you're uh, if you live alone uh, like I do if uh, you know and I'm uh, I've survived much more than this so this isn't you know like this is no this isn't a big deal this isn't really survivable I'm a lot loner anyway <clears throat> But if you are someone who, if you're someone who has struggled with your mental health for a long time, and now you're being told that you have to stay away from people altogether, people need people. That's not a small matter. And so I just, you know, and then take a look at the graph of unemployment. If you haven't seen it, there's a, there's a little GIF on, um, that's available online right now where you can see it animated. It shows 
like a whole century of unemployment numbers leading up to this one and then it just goes into a straight vertical line it, it's pretty stark if you haven't seen the uh, the initial joblessness claim so i highly recommend checking that out and just and then you know like ask yourself if going into the second De great depression is really a good idea like if that's gonna you know like because that might have some consequences as far as people's uh being able to you know like as far as mortality rates go like this this just isn't it's it's not just a simple answer to tell people that um all they have to do is stay home and not work and it's so selfish to worry about the economy well you know the economy is is people's you know it's prosperity and I don't want to watch people struggling to feed their kids you know like unnecessary stresses like that I've watched Venezuela crumble and and if you're if you've paid attention to that situation at all you know that's been in a very short period of time Google the salon article Hugo Chavez economic miracle because that wasn't that long ago and since that time Venezuela has crumbled from what the fourth largest economy in the world in the 1950s to uh, to eating their pets and raiding grocery stores. So, you know, just, I feel like people are, because we've lived with prosperity for so long, it's like people just don't seem to realize that, you know, we have this normalcy bias that makes us think that things will, um, things won't change. And people think that it's a big deal that they can't go out to their favorite bar. That's not a big deal. That's not a big deal. You know, it's a big deal. Big deal is empty store shelves, like no toilet paper, not a big deal. Frankly, I grew up without toilet paper most more than half the time. It's, uh, there are, I'm not gonna go into the gory details, but you, you make do, you know? If there's running water, you're co you can clean your butt. But, <laughs> so I guess I just wanted to offer the other perspective for what I feel like are a lot of people who, who feel bullied into silence right now because everybody who is promoting this, you know, stay away and the social isolation, um, they're a very loud voice. I, uh, I saw a video yesterday of a woman who was screaming at her, uh, at the neighbor kid that she was going to call the cops on him. Is that what we want too? Like we want to go to martial law. We, we wanted to trash all of our freedom in, you know, in two weeks time. So, so martial law, trash the economy, uh, suicides, abused kids not having, you know, like basically being trapped in their homes. There are a lot of people without voices right now who are not able to respond to the way that we are handling this. But let's take a look. You know, Sweden is handling things more liberally. They're handling things differently than we are and not locking down all of society and and schools and restaurants and all that. And I I feel like we could learn a lesson from them because herd immunity is not the, I mean, you know, that's what happens with colds and the flu too. And, you know, we do our best, but flu vaccines only work in a small portion of the cases. So, so yeah, uh, thanks for listening to my, my morning uh, roll out of bed rant. And now I'm going to get ready for work.